What's the scariest story you know that is 100% true? I just watched a documentary about Colleen Stan, who survived being kidnapped by a sexual sadist, who kept her in a coffin sized box he built under his bed, 22 hours a day, for 7 years, while he raped and tortured her. The survivor is the primary interviewee in the documentary, and tells her story, on camera, for most of the documentary. The cops made mention of her bravery and ability withstand her torture, and manipulate her kidnapper to increase her safety. Last summer in my city a 14 year old girl was raped near a train station. After her abuser left her she tried to get help, and flagged down a vehicle, and was raped a second time in the car of the man who stopped. Two complete strangers raped her on the same day, it happened only a few miles away from my house, and I still think about it from time to time. The story of Mary Vincent. I love true crime, and don't usually get squeamish, but this story is probably the most disturbing true crime story I have heard yet. Mary Vincent was 15 years old, when she decided to run away from home on September 28, 1978. She was hitchhiking along the highway in Sokol, California, standing with two other hitchhikers. A man pulled up in a van, and said he only had room for her, but not the others. The man driving the van was 51 year old Larry Singleton. He offered to drive Mary to the I-5 freeway. As he drove, Mary realized that he had passed the ramp to the I-5, and demanded he turn around. Larry said it was an honest mistake and turned around. Soon after, he pulled over, and told Mary he needed to go to the bathroom, and couldn't wait for a rest stop. When he got out of the van, Mary realized her shoe was untied, and got out to tie it. As she was tying her shoelaces, Larry came behind her, and hit her over the head with a sledgehammer. He then proceeded to rape and sodomize her. This is where it gets even worse. Larry took a fucking hatchet, and cut off both of her arms, just below the elbow. Both of her arms. He then threw her down a 30 foot culvert in a canyon, and drove off. The most astounding part of the whole story is that Mary survived. She used what was left of her strength, and made her way 3 miles out of the embankment, with no fucking arms below the elbow, nude, and was stumbling down the road, when she saw a car. The first car she saw, sped away in fear. The second car she saw, was driven by a couple who were on vacation. They stopped the car, helped her into their truck, and drove her to a nearby airport, where they were able to get an ambulance, and she was taken to a hospital. Mary is a fucking badass. She then testified twice against Larry, but he only served 8 years and 4 months for attempted murder, forcible rape, sodomy, kidnapping, mayhem, and forced oral copulation. Seriously the most fucked up story, he got out on good behavior. Later, he murdered a sex worker, and was sentenced to death, and died in 2001 on death row. For me, I was walking back home at like 11pm, when I noticed this hooded guy behind me. I do what I read somewhere you should do, and took 3 right turns in a row to see if he was actually following me, and he was. I managed to gather all my courage, and yelled at him what the fuck do you want with the most menacing tone I could muster, and he just turned around and left. I work at a pizza place in street. Louis called him O's. About 10 years ago, there was a guy who was a manager at our store named Michael Devlin. He abducted 2 children in total but quickly got caught a few days after abducting the second child. The terrifying thing is that he had held the first child, who was 11 when abducted, captive for over 4 years, and pretended that he was his son. The kid even went by the last name Devlin after the whole charade was over. He abducted the second kid by following a school bus to somewhere in Budfuck, Missouri, somewhere where hardly anyone would be able to see him. When he pulled up in his truck, a kid in the back of the bus noticed how it was weird that there was a car in the area rather than the usual ones he saw on most commutes. Next thing he knew, the kid they dropped off went missing, so he gave the police a description of it. A few days later, after reading the paper, my pizza shop owner, Mike, recognized the description and ended up filing a report on his own manager. Devlin is serving like 70 life sentences or some crazy shit. Also, I work with some people who worked with him most I've heard them say about him is, that he was a dick. Fatal familial insomnia. The whole story is batched and perhaps the most terrifying wikipedia rabbit hole I've ever gone down. 
only a few families have this genetic disorder, I Ike, and once you develop it, that's it, you die an agonizing death from an inability to sleep. It starts off like regular insomnia, but progresses over a few years, until you legit go insane and finally shut down. Nothing, not even the most potent drug, can induce sleep. Even when they tried to put them in comas, the brain remained completely active. The United States has lost 11 nuclear weapons, a plane carrying one fell off an aircraft carrier 80 miles off the coast of Japan, a bomber was carrying two over the Mediterranean Sea, and was lost to a storm, a plane crashed over North Carolina, and one was found in a tree and the other was 50 meters underground, it was never found, and the government bought the land around the area, a plane crashed over Greenland and dropped four, three were found but one buried itself in the ice. The worst is, when a bomber crashed over Georgia, and dropped a bomb into the Atlantic Ocean less than half a mile from the state. If that's not bad enough Russia has also lost about 40. Edit 1. The nuke off the coast of Georgia is only 12 miles from the city of Savannah which has a population of more than 146k, so it's best it doesn't explode. There was a serial killer known as the weepy voiced killer. He would kill people then call 9, double 1 from a payphone crying and begging them to catch and stop him. You can find the recordings of his 911 calls on YouTube. This is a hometown story that stayed with me. It happened literally right around the corner from where I grew up, maybe a two minute drive away. Judy Kirby murdered six children and one adult by intentionally driving the wrong way on a divided highway in an attempt to commit suicide. She had been hospitalized for depression but had also just ended a relationship with her ex-husband's brother, and was by some reports involved in drug trafficking and fearing an imminent arrest. She picked up her sister's son, who was celebrating his 10th birthday that day. She then loaded her three children into the car, supposedly to pick up a gift for the nephew. Instead, she went missing with the carload of kids. A short time later, calls started coming into 911 about a car going the wrong way down the highway at a high rate of speed. They made it about 90 seconds before a head-on collision with another vehicle, driven by a father with two children and another child along for the ride. The crash annihilated both vehicles. The only survivors were Kirby herself, and the child who was along for the ride in the other car. There were pieces of children all over the highway. She was sentenced to 215 years in prison. A relative of mine distant, like 5th or 6th cousin I think, was a professional diver for an oil company, he would dive to check things below the surface at depths great enough to require mixed gas air tanks. He had a suit malfunction, and had to be kept in one of those pressure chambers, to slowly let the gases out of his body. While he was breathing through a sealed face mask, someone changed the tank at the end out, and a safety device meant to keep the air from being pulled back through the, from inside the chamber to the outside, failed and literally pulled his lungs and stomach out through his mouth, killing instantly. My mother has the news article somewhere, this was in the late 80s I think, and happened off the coast of La Magina and in the Gulf of Mexico. The story about David Parker A. Ray took her to his trailer and attached a dog collar and leash to Garrett. Garrett awoke, but blacked out several times during two days of torture and drugging. During this time, Ray noticed she was breathing, and slashed her throat open. Thinking he had killed her, Ray dumped her on the side of the road near Caballo. She was later treated for her injuries at a local clinic. Neither her husband, nor police, believed her story. Her husband believed she had been cheating on him the night she was attacked. He filed for divorce, and Garrett relocated to Colorado. She was later interviewed on cold case files about her ordeal. Not the scariest thing that I know about, but the scariest thing that ever happened to me. I worked at a pretty well-known record store in Los Angeles in the 90s. A guy in his early 20s used to come in and ask me about records a lot, and one day in conversation he let a weird detail about my life slip that I hadn't told him. My dad is not American. I brushed it off, thinking my co-workers has mentioned it to him, since he was such a regular. About a week later I was driving home, and my car broke down. It was incredibly hot, and I had to walk several miles, to get to a payphone, which was outside an elementary school. I called a cab, and hung up the phone, and after sitting a moment, it started ringing, so I picked it up. The person on the other end said, bad luck about your car. 
talk to me until your ride gets there. I hung up the phone, but it was definitely that guy. He had to have followed me from home, trailed me from the car, called the school to ask for the payphone number, and found a way to call me at that number. There weren't really cell phones at that time, but there was a gas station and a grocery store across the street so who knows. I immediately quit my job and moved back in with my parents within 48 hours. I went in to visit old friends from work a few months later, and they told me the guy was arrested for kidnapping. FML.